Good morning, Rutherford County, and thank you for joining us this morning. We're here with Word of Faith Responds. My name is Andrea Farmer, and I'm happy to be here with you this morning, filling in for Mark Morris. He couldn't be here, and uh, he was sorry about that, but I'll see what I can do to fill his shoes this morning. Uh, you first met me on Monday. My husband and I share a little bit about our testimony, and different ones from our church for the last several months have been coming on this show, and and telling you about what God's done in our lives, about the power of God in our lives, and, and telling you a little bit about our church and, and the things that we experience at our church. And I'm happy to be here this morning. I have two very, very special people here with me. I have my mother, Ann Sutton, and my aunt, Sammy Miller. Now, my mother has lived here in Rutherford County for a little over 11 years now. And um, she's originally from Oklahoma, as I am. And my Aunt Sammy, she actually still lives in Oklahoma, but she comes to visit us quite often, and, and she stays here for extended periods of time. Um, but they are sisters, and they'd like to share with you this morning a little bit about what God has done in their lives. Thank you. I'm Sammy, and thank you for listening this morning. We're so happy to be here and to share with you what God has done in our lives. Ann and I were born in Oklahoma, a little small town named Pryor. It's about an hour to hour and 15 minutes on the east side of uh, Tulsa, and it's called uh, Green Country, and it is a very beautiful area. And our mother taught school for, we think, about 40 years, and uh, our dad was a postman, and he had the rural routes, not a city route, but a rural route. And there are three of us. Uh, Anne is older. I'm in the middle. And then we had, we had a brother. He is deceased now. So we lived very close to our grandparents. They weren't maybe a block away. And uh, because my parents worked, we um, spent a lot of time with our grandparents. And we were there every day. And I loved my grandmother. She was very precious to me and uh, they were a big influence in our lives. Um, they were the founders of our denominational church that we attended there in Pryor, and uh, so that's where we went to church. And my mother uh, was faithful to be in church. My dad did not go until we got a little older. He went sometimes, but we had a very large <clears throat> youth group and we were very involved we had a lot of friends but uh, it was not happy at home um, our parents uh, lived in strife and uh, there was a lot of fighting hitting there was violence abuse and was a target a lot of the time for the abuse and um, uh, so our whole childhood was just in strife. My parents did divorce later after we were both married, um, but my dad would threaten often, I'm going to leave your mom, I'm going to leave your mom. So we were not shocked when he did leave. Um, my, my place in the family, I felt at the time, uh, I was in the middle. I tried to make peace with everybody. When there were situations going on, I, w I would go to everyone involved and try to help them and try to make everything peaceful. But that doesn't work. You cannot fix anything like that when you're living in that kind of strife. And Anne has told me that she would like, she just ran away. She would try to get as far away as she could. Um, the violence was with our mother and our dad. They were both equally responsible for that. And our dad would leave. Um, sometimes he, he was a postman, so he'd go to the post office and he would sleep in his truck for the night. But when he came back, it would start all over again. Then there were times where he would leave for a week at a time. And when my mom would find out where he was, he would find out from my dad's sister. And then that would upset her. And when he would get back, it would start all over again. And we would find out that he had been to New Mexico to visit a brother 
or he had gone all the way to California to visit two other brothers. So, um, I, it was a very, children, children can't handle that. It, it puts a lot of fear in you, uh, insecurity, and shame. I, I remember feeling so ashamed, um, and some of the violence would, would take place, you know, outside, in the driveway, down the street, and, and I would just think, oh, what do the neighbors think? Do they know what's going on? And even though I was so close to my grandmother, I, I couldn't talk about it. I was so hurt. I was so wounded. I could not talk to anybody about it. And then, then other feelings I had, I thought, well, why don't they just get right? Why can't they just get right? And if something was said that I didn't like, uh, sometimes I would go to my room and I would punch my pillow. That's how I reacted. But the biggest strife I had in me was with my sister. We're only one year apart. Um, and then two years later, our brother was born. So my mom had three, literally had three babies in three years. And um, so I know that was a big responsibility on her while she was working. But we, we were not close. We didn't like each other. We shared a bedroom together, and that was strifle because we just didn't, I didn't like anything she said. I didn't like anything she did. And, um, but when we were in school, uh, I did okay in school. Uh, I think Anne had a difficult time. We're, when, when you live in strife and abuse, ab you're abused, your, your emotions are abused. And uh, so I just strive to excel. But um, I found out I had a lot of bitterness. And uh, bitterness forms your personality. Uh, it talks to you. It tells you how to think. It tells you what to do. It literally controls your life. And I saw that bitterness became my best friend. But um, I did go to college. And that was a way I, I wanted to escape. And I think Ann did too. And um, my mom was big on education. And uh, so I did go to school, got a degree in elementary education. And, uh, and then in, in college, I met my husband there. And so uh, I got a job in the Tulsa public school system. And he was from Tulsa. So we moved to Tulsa. And um, I think now Ann can share. Um, thank you all for letting us come, and uh, thank you for letting us share our testimony with all of you. And uh, Sammy, uh, we are a miracle because we had 50 years of bitterness and strife that we did not even want to see each other, look at each other, have a relationship with each other at all and like she said it developed our personality and I struggled in school as a result of what was going on at home I was totally opposite from Sammy I would oh I would tell everything I would let I would open up my heart and let people know how I felt and sometimes it got me in a lot of trouble <laughs> and so anyway um I escaped by going to Tulsa, and I went um, a couple of years to a college in Indiana. I escaped there. I wanted to, it didn't make any difference what I wanted to do. I just wanted to escape from all the things, and I tried to get rid of all the things I went through. They always were heavy. They were an extra baggage in our lives. And um, so, as Andrea told you, um, last uh, few days ago, um, I have two older children that are adopted, and uh, 17 years later, we had another child, and it was Andrea. And so I really didn't want to move, but God, you know, He has a plan, and He had a great plan because um, we lived in a home where I loved the home, and God moved us 
out in a uh, way out in a neighborhood, and it was in July when we moved. Now, now when you say about moving, is that when that's when I came along when I yes, was born? Yes, when that, right? I, I was five months pregnant when she came along. Okay, and um, I met this precious lady when uh, we had a trampoline on the outside of our yard. I met this precious, precious lady, and it was Jane Whaley. And she was, she became my neighbor. She moved in, uh, we moved in July. She moved in August. And they lived there for seven or eight years. And uh, I became very close. And this was a neighborhood in Tulsa still, Yes, right? in Tulsa. Okay. And uh, I traveled with her. I was at their house about every day. So I saw the lives that they lived and how they lived and how they walked with God. And it was such an example to me. And Andrea and Robin, their daughter, became very close friends. In fact, Robin babysat for for Andrea as she was growing up. And so there was there was a, an example to me all those years as I lived in Tulsa um, of what their lifestyle was like. And um, we would come back and forth different times and spend two, three weeks. Sammy and I would. We mm -hmm. would travel. Um, back and forth to seminars or to meetings. Okay, so at some point, Sam and Jane moved back here. Yes, Back to Rutherford County. Yes, and you were did. referring to when you yes. came here to visit them. Yes. Okay. And um, there was a time in our lives where God began to deal with us about our bitterness and our strife mm -hmm. and all the things that we lived in in our childhood. And it didn't, it didn't happen overnight, but eventually... God began to deal with our hearts because we really actually had to face what was in us. Because, you know, when you have bitterness and strife, you always want to blame the other person or make excuses for what someone else did. And God really dealt with us about what was in us. And I really believe that's when both of us got born again because we saw what was in us. But so there God, was such... So God began to show you how it worked in you even so many years after you lived in that and went through That's all right. that as a child. God began to show you how it affected your life. It did. Mm -hmm. It affected our personality. It affected our relationship. And so there was such a love of God in Jane and Sam's heart to help people. And they they did a lot to help us to walk through this. And especially... Um, the bitterness that we had for our mother for what had happened to us. We blamed her a lot for everything, but God really showed us it was it was an assignment of God to attack the, the call devil. of God, of the devil to attack the call of God on our lives. And um, um, God really showed us those things in our hearts that we needed to deal with, that we needed to get rid of, that we need to accept that that's it wasn't us, it was what the devil had done to us. And there was a place where we began to come out and where we began to enjoy one another. Our children, it was amazing, even though that um, we didn't speak to each other a lot, our children were actually close as they were growing up. And um, we began to enjoy one another. We, it, was a, it was a process. But um, God really restored, totally restored, and we had we had 50 years of it. That's a long, many years to have that strife. And I saw that when your parents have strife and have problems in a, in their marriage, it comes into the children. Mm -hmm. It does affect them greatly. And um, we uh, we begin to enjoy each other. We begin to want to be with each other, and even this time that that Sammy has been here momentarily. We have enjoyed so much being together because it's like God is restoring those years of all those years that we were not able to have that relationship that we should have had. Well, I was going to den the denomination that we uh, were raised in. And uh, I remember uh, one time Ann called me and I hadn't heard from her for quite a while. <laughs> And she began to tell me how sorry she was for uh, our relationship and how uh, she wanted to ask me to forgive her 
for the things she's done, the things she said. And that really touched me. That got to my heart. And it wasn't too long after that that Anne invited my husband and me to go to um, a large service that, uh, that the church they were going to. And we went. And uh, it was a charismatic. So there's a big difference between denominational churches and charismatic churches. And I loved it. And um, so we went to that church and uh, we loved it so much we started going there. And so that did, that brought us closer together in some respects, but we still had all of this in our hearts that we had to deal with. And uh, I remember the first time I saw Jane, I had uh, been to Ann's house to find her and she wasn't there. And as, as I was leaving the neighborhood, uh, Ann was with Jane in, in her car. And uh, she hung her head out and was so friendly to me. And uh, I, I was just so impressed about how sweet she was. And then not too long after that, um, they invited me to come to some Friday night meetings that Jane and Sam were having. And that's how I got involved and uh, got to know Sam and Jane. So I started coming here and I would stay in Jane's house. And I would just, she helped me so much. She helped me understand what I had lived in and how God could bring me out. And um, I began to get prayer and um, and, it, and there were times where I struggled because when, when you have that level of, of abuse and bitterness in you, uh, bitterness will, you don't, you don't want to let go of it. I didn't. And um, uh, there were two landmarks in my life through, through this time. One was um, when a good friend of mine that, uh, that came in my life was Nancy Hickman. She said to me one time, she said, uh, you've got to make a decision. If no one serves God, not your husband, not Anne, your mother, anyone, you've got to make the decision for yourself. Then the other landmark in my life was um, one time uh, Anne and I w had seen our mother and we were driving back to Tulsa and something was said that I didn't like. And all of that anger and resentment stirred up in me and we, I was driving and I had feelings of hatred and murder. And I felt like that it would be just fine with me if her door opened up and she just fell out and I would just keep driving. But on the way home, God began to convict me, and, and, and he showed me that anger and that murder in my life, and I, ju I just began to let him deal with it. I submitted my heart. I said, God, I want to, don't want to be that way. I don't want that in my heart. I want you to get that out of me. And so I began to get free of that. And um, so... Uh, we, we cared for our mother and we went through several situations with her. Some of them were funny and some of them were stressful, but it just did. It brought us closer together. And uh, I remember the first time I really felt like we flowed together was when she did die and pass away. And uh, we planned her funeral service. And that was such a blessing to me uh, to show us that we could walk together because we are called to walk together. And the, the enemy, Satan, uh, his plan for our lives was to separate us and to divide us. And what, what the enemy meant for uh, the bad, God has turned it around for good. That's right. And yours is really a testimony of where you had so much strife, yet God removed it from your heart and replaced it with the love of God. Because I've even been... A witness in the last several years of how much you all do love each other and every day they call each other and every day they want to spend time together that they can and and really how God has put his love in your heart for each other one of the main landmarks in my life was when God was dealing with me about the bitterness that I had for my mother was God spoke to me and told me that if I did not deal with my relationship with my mother I would not have godly relationships with anyone because 
you it develops your personality it develops your thinking and I began to cry out to God and God showed me one of the key things he showed me was of what my mother went through as she grew up and it broke so much in my heart and it broke so much of the tenderness and softness where I could forgive I could actually forgive my mother and I had never been able to do that and I was I had been married in it was 30 years at least that that it took for that forgiveness to come and as a result of that I was able to forgive Sammy and to forgive my brother even with situations with him we didn't have as much situations with him as we did with one another and um, there there was such restoration in our mother got sick and we needed to take care of her and that was a miracle too because yes. we were able to flow for two years to take care of our mother and it really was a miracle because if it had not been for God's healing power we probably would have had so much strife but one of the most important things that God showed me when I changed even though I do not know what happened to my mother as far as her heart or whatever happened to her as far as the issues that she went through she changed she responded to Sammy and I we would hear the voice of God we would cry out God what do we need to do to help my mother what do we need to do to do have the best for her and there was such a response and such a tenderness in her heart that had not been there and I saw that she had gone through so much hurt herself and that was one of the main things that I see in when there is a relationship with a parent that you um, you do not see or realize what the parent has gone through because it passes down to you and if you can and God really showed us how that restoration could come and how healing could come one thing that God showed me during my time of deliverance was he gave me the scripture Isaiah 1 where the children of Israel were in the wilderness and uh, he was just telling them you do not run to me you're so hurt you're so wounded and you, the insides are just like putrefying sores and uh, God showed me that's that's what was working in me and but but during the during that time I did have some struggles because I didn't want to let go of it I told God one day I said if if I let go of all of this then I will not even know who I am and it was very fearful but as I was just talking to God I just felt him put his arms around me and I just felt the love of God and I was able to submit my heart and uh, I made big progress after after those two landmarks that I shared with you but um, when we started coming down here, uh, Sam and Jane decided, we all decided to start a church in uh, Tulsa. And we had uh, quite a few people from Muskogee that uh, would come. And so we just started a church. We had church in my house for a season. We had church in Ann's house for a season. We would go to Nancy's house in Muskogee and have church. And uh, we, then we started a Christian school and uh, I don't remember how many students we had, but that was, that was such a blessed time to be together and uh, to learn about the things of God and how to raise children, because we don't know how to raise children. We don't know anything about how to raise children. God has to teach us. But one thing I, I know about Sam and Jane, I've known them since probably 1982, 1983. That's a long time. I have never seen anything but the love of God from these two people. They, they are so precious. They laid their lives down for you. And I've, I've been here for several months now. I had uh, one hip surgery in January and had a knee surgery in April. And I'm getting ready to have my other knee fixed in August. And the body of Christ here is so precious. They just love you. They take care of you. They do everything for you. 
and I just wouldn't want to be anywhere else. We wouldn't want you to be anywhere else but with us. <laughs> well, we're so grateful, really, for what God has done in their lives. And theirs is truly a testimony of no matter what you've been through as a child, no matter how hurt you've right. been, no That's matter right. what you've witnessed, because I know even they weren't, didn't feel at liberty to even share some of the very, very bad things that they witnessed as little girls. But, you know, that God can come in and God can change all of that. And yes. that, it, that there is hope. Yes. There is hope with the love of God. When it comes in your heart, there is hope that it can change and that your lives can change and that your relationships can be restored. Yes. So thank you very, very much for listening to us this morning. Um, we'll continue to bring you more testimonies uh, from other members of our church. And uh, we hope that you see and realize that, that the power of God that has come to our lives and changed our lives can come to you as well. Thank you very much, and you all have a great day.